All right, man, peace. So I caught a very interesting segment on the CBS Morning News pertaining to an ancient language that I feel is very important, particularly to brothers who are interested in history or who are pursuing any form of scholarliness, (laughs) especially pertaining to the scriptures or just general history. And that language is Latin. Very important language. So anyway... Once again, this is a very interesting segment. They're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. It's a rare sound these days. A Roman Catholic mass said in Latin. The language was once at the heart of Western culture. For centuries, most books and official letters were written in Latin. Uh, Let me say this. Uh, Latin... In the aftermath of the fall of the Roman Empire and the rise of the Germanic tribes, who, by the way, were so-called black, as well as the the Celtic tribes who were so-called black. And I'm sure that that's going to upset certain people. I really don't give a damn. Latin was the language of scholarship. Now, during the time of the Roman Empire, interestingly enough, Latin was the language of the masses and the language of the scholars was Greek. So the importance of Latin is getting a firm understanding of what occurred during the period from the Roman Empire all the way through the medieval time period. Many of the annals of the various courts of the medieval time period are written in Latin. For example, They have one, if I remember correctly, called the Royal Annals of the Franks, which covers the time period from a little bit after Charles Martel all the way through Louis the Pious, who I believe, if I remember correctly, was the grandson of Charlemagne, either either the son or the grandson. One of you brothers could look it up. But Latin is a very revelatory language in regards to um, in regards to uh, uh, providing proper context to things that occurred during that time period, things that still resonate until today. Now, the meaning of the term Latin, it just means hidden or to, or to lie hid, to hide. And the reason why Latin is the official language of the Catholic Church is because the Catholic Church is an offshoot of the Babylonian mystery school system, the hidden system. Okay? The Pope is the vicar of Osiris, or as he's known in the scriptures, Nimrod. But anyway, you know, let me let them continue and I'll chime in here and there. Today, it is considered a dead language, except to those who are trying to resurrect it. Brooke Silva Braga is here with one man's efforts to keep Latin alive. Brooke, good morning. Good morning. Well, one estimate puts the number of truly fluent Latin speakers in the world at just a hundred people, but one man has made it his life's work to save the language from extinction, and where he's doing it is as unlikely as how he's doing it. In the basement of a nursing home in Milwaukee, the world's best Latin lessons are given for free. In the middle of the table, that's Father Reginald Foster. You're gonna have to do this sooner or later. A priest who lacks patience. Sit down and shut up. A (laughs) teacher. I said a teacher who lacks patience. Most scholars or teachers or instructors or sages per se who are uh, who are extremely wise, they do lack patience because most of their students are not going to have the zest for learning that they have. (laughs) Dude says sit down and shut up. Latin, let me also say this, Latin is important not only from a historical perspective or a scholarly perspective, it's also important for you to get, for you to gain a greater, um, a greater grasp or hold on English. Because many of the multisyllabic words in English are derived from Latin. You'd be surprised about what you can learn about the etymological meaning of words when you have an understanding of Latin. It, it certainly brings a greater a greater hold, a greater insight to what words mean and what they actually imply. Teacher, Dr. 
dominates his classroom. You better be away. The man who has managed to convince hundreds of people to dedicate their lives to a language no longer living. His passion is what drives us. He's like the rock star of the Latin world. So um, it's just great to be in his orbit. Why are you so good at Latin? Is it just the time you put in? You see what I'm sitting on? My butt? You sit on your butt and study Latin as long as I am. You'll be a master too. In other words, it's not that hard. You just have to have a, a zest for it and a verb for it. And I agree. Uh, I learned Latin in high school. We used to have classes every day from um, from freshman year all the way to senior year. And I'm nowhere near as good at it as I was in, in uh, high school. But I can still recognize certain words and I still remember many of the rules even though I have to get back into it but Latin is a, is a, is a language for people who, who love history if you don't love history it's not really going to interest you but for, for those of you brothers who are into the knowledge or who are interested in getting a, um, a greater understanding of the scriptures the Bible it is certainly a language that is worth investigating it just seems too hard no every Poor person, derelict, prostitute, anyone else in Rome spoke Latin. If they could do it. Well, if they could do it. And I also say, when the Romans said to their dogs, they had pets, come here, sit down, and eat your dinner. Veni hoc, concede, et genam tuam sume. And take your dinner in Latin. Well, the dog picked it up. As a young man, Foster, the son of a Milwaukee plumber, became a priest in Rome with a knack for the language. And in 1970, got a call from the Vatican. They wanted him to. Now, you see the priests of Rome or the quote unquote Latin church or the hidden church, just the Babylonian church. You see, they carry those long candles. Those candles are in veneration of Tammuz, right? Tammuz, the, the word Tammuz or the name Tammuz, who's the god of vegetation, um, that's basically the Semitic version of Heru or Horus. The, the name Tammuz means to be purified by fire. And that is why you'll see the, um, the extensive use of candles, not just in the Catholic Church, but also in the Wiccan Church. And I'll probably be doing a video on the Wiccan Church very soon. Remember when I did the video on uh, the Spike Lee film, She's Gotta Have It. I mentioned how Nola Darling would have her bed surrounded by candles because that's consistent in the that's consistent with the witchcraft circles, which is just an offshoot of the Babylonian mystery school system. OK, so when you become a priest of the Catholic Church, Catholic meaning universal, also known as the Latin Church, which means the hidden church or the mis or the uh, the mystery school, they carry the candle in veneration of Tammuz a.k.a. Haru, or he was also known as Apollo. To translate Latin, for the Pope, for the next 40 years, he wrote speeches and letters in the names of four popes. And I mentioned this before. You can see the Pope's, uh, that, that headpiece that the Pope wears is the fish hat for Dagon. And those of you brothers who read the scriptures, you know who Dagon is. He's the fish god. Now, in Egypt, he was also known as Latus. L A T U S. And he was and the fish god or Dagon was venerated in Egypt as Latus, which was another name for Osiris, because it was believed that Osiris was um put underwater and he came back to life. He regenerated. Also note that the uh the Hindu god Vishnu is known for being half man, half fish as well. But that's it. That's a that's a composite of Nimrod as well as Noah, because the name Vishnu just means the man of rest. See, the difference between the other nations and the so-called pagan mythologies or the mystery school system and the Bible is that the Bible tells you what actually occurred. These other systems tell you they, they uh, tell you they, they tell you what occurred historically from the perspective of Cush and Nimrod. And what they'd like you to understand based off of 
the veneration of Osiris, who was set up by his father to be the left-hand version of Christ. So you have many of these brothers who delve into these other belief systems and they want to tell you about how Christ is really Haru. That what, they're really t what they're really telling you is that they don't understand the Babylonian Kemetic Mystery School system, nor do they understand the Bible. Osiris or Nimrod was trying to take on the characteristics of Christ, which is why he was eventually put to death by Shem, who's known in the Kemetic uh, mythologies as Set. He is the person who conquered or killed Osiris and cut him up into many pieces. Okay? And who thereafter pursued his mother uh, slash wife, Semiramis. But just to get back to the point, when you look at these uh, high-level figures in the Catholic Church, they're venerating the fish god, Dagon, who was known in Egypt as Latus, L-A-T-U-S, which the term Lat or Latus means to hide, the hidden one. Also known as Saturn, which means the same thing to hide, or Amun-Ra, the hidden god. It's all talking about the same figures, Cush and his son Nimrod. Okay? So... That is why the, 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 um, the term Latin is used. Remember, Latin comes from Greek. And when you look at the official origin of many of these languages, they'll tell you about how those languages are Indo-European, all this nonsense. There's no such thing as Indo-European. All languages come from the same original proto-language. The alphabet of the Greeks, quote-unquote Greeks, who were black prior to the invasion of the Macedonians, by the way, their alphabet came from the Phoenicians, who are known in the Bible as the Canaanites. Okay? The Canaanites are the offspring of Ham. Or as he's known, or as that word is pronounced in the English, Ham, but as it's really pronounced is, is Chem. And that's where you get the term Chemet from. Okay? So, the Phoenicians provided the alphabet to the original Greeks, who were known as the Pelasgians or the Dorians. Uh the uh, Aetolians, Achaeans, so on and so forth. And they were all different tribes of people of color. The Pelasgians are known in the Bible as the Philistines. Okay? So the Greek alphabet made its way into Italy, where it was taken by the Etruscans, who are known in the Bible as the Ludim, L-U-D-I-M. In conventional history, they're known as the Lydians. Okay? They were also people of color. The Etruscans passed their alphabet down to the Latins, and Italy was eventually invaded by the um, by the Caucasians, who became known as uh, the the Imperial Romans, who came into power after they conquered most of that peninsula, and they fully came into power when they were able to defeat Hannibal in the Second Punic War, and then they went on to have a uh, a war with the Macedonians for supremacy of the Mediterranean region. Okay, but the Pope is just a vicar for Osiris, which once again is where that headdress comes from. And that term lat or Latin, it just means to hide. Even the god Shiva was known as Laut or Lot, the hidden god. Okay, also the destroyer god. So Osiris, Saturn, Amun-Ra, Shiva is all talking about the same entity. Okay? Tim, this is the Pope. What would you say? I said, well, I have some ideas. One of Foster's ideas was rejecting the trappings of the church. Instead of a priest's habit, he dressed like a working man. Instead of a mattress, he slept on the floor. His Latin was so good, the church tolerated Foster, but the high-profile job didn't quite satisfy him. You guys know what we were doing? Upstairs in the office? It was useless. No one's reading those letters. So I said, I want to do something useful. She said, Latin. In my way. His way meant scrapping the traditional method of memorizing tables of text and instead treating Latin as a living spoken language. It was a radical departure in approach. And let me say this, that's really the only way to learn a language, especially an ancient language, is through conversation. When I was in high school and we were being taught Latin, we would, uh, we would always recite the Our Father. That's the first thing that we would do. We would recite that in Latin. That was uh, Pater Noster, 
Quies in Chalice, Sanctificator Nomen Tuum, Arbania Regnum Tuum, Fia Voluntas Tua, Secret in Celo, Et in Terra, Panam Nostrum, Cotidianum, Da Nobis Hodie, Et Dimite Nobis Debita Nostra, Secret et Nos dimit Dimitimus, Debitoribus Nostris, Et ne Nos Inducas in Tentationem, Se Libera Nos Amalo, Amen. That's the Our Father in Latin. And once again, I'm, I'm a believer that all ancient languages, if they can be conserved, conserve them. Because that's the only way that you get an accurate appraisal and understanding of what occurred in history. That's why I tell you, brothers, this is a pro-truth channel. This is not a pro-black channel. All right. Pro-blacks are, are no better than the so-called uh, um, white nationalists. They want to contort history. Our, our history is so vast. There's no need to contort it. When I talk about the so-called black man, there's no need to try to make yourself into something that you're not. Like these guys, they want to make themselves into people of Kemet. The people of Kemet are those who are known today as the Nilotic tribes, the Nilotic peoples. You're not from Kemet. If you want to know who those people are today, once again, they're known as the Nilotic peoples. Those are the newer, spelled N-U-E-R, the Dinka, the Maasai, so on and so forth. Right, they practice scarification, drinking blood, feces, etc. Eating feces, uh, excessive piercings. That's what they do. All right, they were also priests of Osiris in the ancient time. They practice flagellation, as did and still do many of the Catholic monks. What is flagellation? It means self mutilation, whipping themselves, and that's why the uh, Kemetic tribes do that. That's why they scarify their bodies. That's an emulation of what occurred to Osiris. Okay? But you know what? We'll probably delve into that deeper in another video. Something out of the world of fantasy. Uh, a monk in Rome speaking Latin. Jason Petticone had studied Latin by rote, but never heard anyone speak it out loud. He has scores of students who've become Latin teachers, several who've become Ivy League professors. That has affected a change on the culture of the way Latin is taught. Foster would still be teaching and translating at the Vatican if a bad fall hadn't landed him in a wheelchair, just as an appearance in Bill Maher's 2008 documentary, Religious, landed him in hot water with the church. Now, I, I no, when, when I first saw this segment and they showed him in the wheelchair, I said, I recognize this old bald-headed white man from somewhere. I said, isn't this the same dude in, in Religious that was talking crazy? I, I said, that's him. I knew it. <laughs> you know what this guy looked like? He looked like uh, the principal from Back to the Future. <laughs> what was that guy's name? Who was always giving Marty McFly a hard time? <laughs> when you look at a building like that, a giant palace, does it seem at odds with the message of the founder? Well, certainly. But does it bother you? Well, I mean, I mean, I mean well, yes, it does. Yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't, if I were the boss, I wouldn't be living there. Foster was flown home to Milwaukee, never to return to Rome. Third chapter are these sentences. Now, 78, he's working on textbooks to share his method. Here I am, 19 years old. But is devoid of sentiment. We asked if he had photos of his life, and he said he'd thrown them all in a dumpster years ago. Luckily, a neighbor climbed in and saved them. Why would you throw all this out? This is the history of your life. I never want to look at that again. <laughs> the reason why he doesn't want to look at that again is because even though he want, he doesn't want to admit it, he knows that the Catholic Church is full of shit. That's why. He most likely is disillusioned and he realizes that he was a member of a, uh, of a cult, which is what the Catholic Church is. And let me also say this. When you know when you when you go into the scriptures and it tells you that that it talks about the number of uh, in in Revelation the, the number six 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 that's in reference to Saturn or as he was also known as Latinos right that's why you keep seeing that that those three letters L A T to hide or the hidden one come up again and again okay L A T E I N O S and I mentioned this in a video that I did. Um, or I may have mentioned this, maybe I didn't The video that I did about Star Wars with, with Anakin Skywalker, Why Great Men Fall 
And I mentioned that Anakin represents Osiris. Uh, Padme represents Leto or Lato, which is the, the hidden goddess. Uh, she's the one who gave birth to the twins. If you look in the uh, Greek mythology, quote unquote mythology, which is really just a coded version of what occurred in history. Uh, Lato gave birth to, or Lato, I should say, L-A-T-O. She gave birth to, I believe it was Jupiter's twins, that being um, uh, Apollo and uh, Artemis, who are represented in the Star Wars saga as Luke and Leia. Because Apollo is the Greek version of Heru. Okay? Heru is the, the light bearer. He is also known as the Skywalker. Artemis, the female, is known as the warrior princess, the, uh, the, no, the archer, the huntress. That is Leia. Okay? So George Lucas, he, he got the idea of Star Wars from the, uh, the mythologies. He also took some components of the Bible. But I'll, I'll be dealing with that probably if I do a video on Star Wars. And also it was to promote uh, the craft, all right, his Wiccan beliefs. But that's a story for another day. It's gone. Past. Finished. Over with. Done. Forgotten. Goodbye. Ciao, ciao. Except it isn't, really. Foster's old students not only carried on the Latin summer classes in Rome, Jason Petticone's nonprofit, the Paideia Institute, now brings Latin into underserved American classrooms, helping these kids' English vocabularies in the process. Wait, guys, 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 wait. And on a recent Saturday, high school students swept through New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art for a Latin scavenger hunt. Once again, you'll see the link between Latin and historical research. There's not much point in knowing Latin if you're one of these people who doesn't care about history or, or who just lives in the moment, lives for today. But you will definitely find that people who are interested in Latin also have a high level interest in history. Okay? Like in, in, uh, in ancient Latin, the C was pronounced as a K oftentimes. So the term Caesar really is, is uh, Kaiser. That's where you get the term for the, uh, the German chancellor, the Kaiser from, like Kaiser Wilhelm. Or in Russia, the term Caesar became known as the Tsar. So, the, 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 in the aftermath of the Roman Empire, there was a heavy influence on all the kingdoms that came afterward and the ruling, uh, no, the ruling empires that came afterward. The Gospel of Father Reginald Foster is winning converts. How long have you been studying now? Um, 557 days. So she won't forget, Grace Milliman wrote the date on her shoes in Roman numerals. September 2nd, 2016, and I walked into that classroom and, like, my entire life changed. People say it's a dead language. It's roaming around, it's not dead. <laughs> but um, bump <laughs> that's, that's nerd humor right there. <laughs> <laughs> you were ready for that. I am always ready for that. <laughs> This is so fun. Seeing a young person that excited, uh, even if he doesn't want to admit it, I think would make Reginald yeah, really, really happy. And uh, I think that in her, he will live on and the tradition will live on. And, and let me say this, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that many times when you watch these features, um, you see many of these young children who are uh, re reading Latin and going to museums. And most of the time, they're not black. And the interesting thing is that during the during the late Roman Empire, it was led and dominated by so-called black men. Many of the more notable figures of ancient Rome, other than the imperial period, were so-called black. Believe it or not. All right. Marcus Aurelius and Septimius Severus and Caracalla and the four Tetrarchs, uh, you know, Diocletian, uh, Maximian and uh, uh of course, Constantine, so on and so forth. Those were all so-called black men. Okay? So you should not feel a detachment from the Roman Empire. And as I've already stated, the outset of the Roman Empire or, or the Roman Republic were dominated by the Etruscans, right, who basically taught the Caucasians who came into that land 
about engineering and science and also many of the more arcane aspects of their culture that they got from Babylon, what they call augury or, or reading the flight of birds. Also, uh, the Haruspex, which was reading the liver, right? They would take out the, um, the liver of animals and read them to try to prognosticate the future, which they got from Babylon, right? Divination, all these things, the Caucasian Romans who were going to become the Imperial Roman Empire, they learned from the Etruscans. So, uh, once again, it's important to understand history in, in its proper context. And also remember, too, when, when, um, when Yahweh Shai, or as he's conventionally known, Jesus Christ was put on the, on the cross, the, um, the, the statement that was above the cross was in, was in Latin as well. Right? It was in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Latin is easy. It is taught right. That's what you've tried to change. I am changing. I'm going to teach right now. And Foster is willing to teach anyone who shows up in Milwaukee. No experience needed. His method is also taught in a London summer program. And his second book in that five-volume series is now headed to the printing press. And he says he has no plans to stop teaching. Amazing. Tempest Fugit Carpe Diem. Yeah. That's all in. That's interesting. I may have to check out his book. I may have to check out his book. And, you know, the chick said Tempest Fugit <laughs> Carpe Diem. For those of you who don't know, that means uh, time flies and sees the day. I know. I, I know he said even a dog could learn it, but I took it all the way through high school and it was and murder. He <laughs> says remember? people are learning it the wrong way. I think he's probably right. I agree with that because it was kind of laborious when I was learning it in high school, but there, was, there were not enough conversational methods used to teach it, which is the best way, once again, to learn a language, not through the rote Writing down the laws and the principles, you know, ah, a, us, e, um, ah, you know, all these, you know, in, in, in Latin that the the vowels are not a, e, i, o, u, it's ah, a, e, u, uh, you know, all these all these things you had to learn, all these rules in Latin, but the rules are hard and fast. It's not like English. English is such a whimsical language; it's very difficult to learn. You know, in Latin, the rules are relatively hard and fast, but I mean, it is what it is. But anyway, I thought that this was a very interesting segment. Let me see how they're closing this out. Because it didn't work for me. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> Silver Braga, thanks. <laughs> With the but anyway, yeah, they close it out on some silly shit. Uh, but yeah, brothers, you know, you get the chance. Look into some Latin if you're trying to, to um, heighten your understanding of history or even the scriptures. I believe it was St. Jerome who translated the Bible into Latin. And, oh, by the way, Latin was one of the main uh, reasons why you had the Reformation and you had a lot of upheaval in the church in the latter part of the, midi of the medieval time period because they wanted to take Latin out of the hands of just the elite, the nobility, the ruling classes, and translate it into English or German or, you know, the language of the masses so that it could be understood by everyone. That was also in the process of them trying to take these scriptures away from the Catholic Church and the monopoly that the Catholic Church had over the people through the Bible. All right, so there were a lot of there were a lot of factors that went into the the Reformation and a lot of the wars that were fought in the 1500s and 1600s that also led to the fall of the Black rulership of Europe. But those are videos for another day. All right, but anyway, peace.